Okay, we're all, right. all set to continue. Okay. So, given your experience in the Navy and the fact that you're a biology major, were, when you were in high school, you were thinking of becoming a physician, or what were you thinking when you were in high school? I, I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. I wasn't quite sure. And uh, uh, I guess it, things just happened to fall into place with respect to uh, educational experiences. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but uh, I think I probably didn't make up my mind in the health arena until I reached Shaw University. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though even though I had had this experience in the Navy, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, when I was going in school at Shaw, I kind of decided, well, oh, this is a good, right. good area. Right. Yeah. Uh, had, did not know which direction I would be going. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But at Shaw at that time, you had Ella Baker um, holding the first students meeting around that time, and we a lot of civil way, rights stuff got yeah, started. Yeah, back see, then. that that was that was uh, after my day. Oh, at Shaw. You see, okay. I, I I graduated from Shaw University in 1949. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a little yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a little right. before that. That's before right. That That's right. Uh, but 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 we can always talk about Shaw and those experiences. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 that was that's <laughs> where a lot of people saw it as initially started. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for those of us who ended up in SNCC back in the '60s. Uh -huh. Shaw was yeah. the yeah. was the place where it started. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. So. So then, when you finished in 1949, you took a number of positions in health education at various places. Well, what I did was, in, I got my baccalaurea degree in Shaw in 49. Mm. Right. And I was accepted uh, in the health education program at North Carolina Central. Okay. And that's how I really got into I the see. health arena at, at that point. Okay, okay. And, and, uh, the, the North Carolina Central experience, and, and I'd like to talk about it because <clears throat> this was in the day when everything was segregated. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dr. Lucy Morgan, hmm. who was on the faculty, head of health education, right. in this school of public health, right. uh, in collaboration with the president of North Carolina Central University, mm established the health education program at the master's level at North Carolina Central. Right. And so given the segregation mm -hmm, issues mm -hmm, and so on, mm -hmm. those of us who are black interested in public health and particularly all the field of health education mm -hmm. would, would go to the central. Mm -hmm, others okay. of course would go to Chapel Hill and other places. So did you spend, it was a two-year program? It, 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 it was a one-year program. Oh, okay. But the, but, the, but the great part about this was, here was an institution, say, UNC in Chapel Hill, and another one, North Carolina, what was then called North Carolina College. Right. In, in, right. in, in, in another community serving both serving different students based on color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, had the foresight, and I give Dr. Morgan credit for this. Yeah. And Dr. Shepard credit for following through mm -hmm. to say, let's do the same thing here. Mm -hmm. and we can admit black students. Mm -hmm. UNC took it a step further. We will provide the same faculty that we have at UNC to teach the courses here at the center. Yeah. So we had mm -hmm. Dr. Greenberg, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. from the Bible stack. Yeah, yeah. I think in that day, now you're epidemiology. Yeah. I, I, there was a, I remember Dr. Losh, I think I'm pronouncing his name right. Yes. John Losh? John, John yeah. Losh. Yeah. In, in, in the epidemiology. Right. He taught. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And and so, those faculty commuted from Chapel Hill to Durham. Right. Okay. About those. Yeah. Well, I know uh, Dr. Greenberg, Bernie Greenberg, because I started out in biostatistics. Uh -huh. I came here. Uh, I was at Georgetown in biostatistics. So when I got recruited here, I um, 
you know, took a lot of our stack course. So he was uh, definitely a mentor to me. And, uh, and uh, I got to know his son, who is president of Medical University of South Carolina. So, and he's carrying it on just like Bernie did, yeah. Dr. Greenberg was a great guy. Yeah, he was, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so then uh, you finished up at North Carolina Central, and then that's when, after you had your first professional experience then? Or? Uh, yes, but it, it took a little while for me to have my first professional experience. Hmm. Because I could not find a job. Hmm. <clears throat> now, I was trying my best to stay in the South, mm -hmm. in, preferably in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Right. Uh, but when I got my master's in public health education from mm. North Carolina Central University, mm. uh, there were no jobs mm. in this area, in in my field. Mm -hmm. Or let's be blunt about it. There were no jobs for blacks, mm -hmm. because and agencies could not afford to hire two persons in one field mm -hmm. to serve the community. Mm -hmm. When they could hire just one mm -hmm. and could serve both communities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that that's one example of how segregation mm -hmm. affected the provision of services in, that, in health and the availability of jobs in the health mm -hmm. arena, uh, particularly for, for blacks. Mm -hmm. uh, now, right around this time, the Negro health movement was waning. It was getting ready to close down. Closed down in 1954. There was, no, was there any effort in North Carolina that you were aware of that was considered part of the Negro health movement? which was supported by the Public Health Service for Black communities? That, that I'm, not, I'm not aware of. Oh, okay, 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 all right, okay. There might have been. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. But so, but, but, but see, I'm sorry. When, when, I, when I could not find a job yeah. in the health arena, and I wanted to stay in North Carolina, uh -huh. uh, well, I did a little of everything. Mm. To, to work to right. make ends meet. Right. I, I had the privilege of, of marrying uh, my high school sweetheart oh, wow. in, in, in the summer of 1950, uh -huh. which was the same time I got my degree. Right, and right. So, right. You know, you know, degree with no job. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to work. Right. And that's what I had to do. Wow. So, but it, it worked out. Yeah. It worked out. So do you mind that? So what kind of work did you would that you that had to do in order to yeah? yeah. Okay. Well, let me tell you, uh, I had a master's degree in my pocket, but uh, I was right. I was uh, packing bags at a, at a grocery supermarket yeah. one time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, uh, I had a friend who <clears throat> was working with was a appliance dealer. Mm -hmm. in the Raleigh area, and they had a warehouse full of uh, uh, old refrigerators mm -hmm. that needed cleaning, so mm -hmm. I cleaned refrigerators. Yeah, wow, yeah. Well, uh, you had to work. Yes. And to get, make ends meet. Right. Until finally. Right. I uh, was able to. Finally. Right. What I was trying to do, I'll be frank, I was trying my best to stay in the North Carolina. Mm -hmm. In the South. Mm -hmm. That's where I grew up. Mm -hmm. and that's where I went. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, and so, otherwise, uh, I, I guess I would have gone early uh, in terms of finding a job. Yeah. Uh, but, but uh, Dr. Morgan and some of the faculty here at the Chapel Hill were very instrumental in my getting a position with the American Cancer Society in mm -hmm. my hometown, mm -hmm. Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Well, that was during a summer. Mm -hmm. I was able to work, work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also, my next job in the Raleigh area was with the Wake County Health Department. Mm -hmm. It was a joint appointment between the County Health Department and the school system. Mm -hmm. I worked in one of the elementary schools mm -hmm. and working with teachers. 
mm -hmm. and respected him. And then it was after that that uh, I was able to secure a full-time position, but I, I had to leave. Yeah. Dear old North Carolina. Right, so yeah. I said goodbye. Right. And, and went to Washington, D.C., right. where I worked with the District of Columbia Tuberculosis Association. Right, okay. In my first full time. Yeah. So, in those cases, it was directly observed therapy? I mean, is that what you did of prevention for TB? Uh, but we we would we would work very closely in communities. To, yeah, from a preventive matters per perspective, and, and one focus, of course, at that time was on chest X-rays. Mm -hmm, right. Promoting community That's programs. That's right. Right. For people to get chest X-rays to make certain that they did not have it, and if they did, to find it early mm -hmm. so it could be treated. So, right. So we, what we section of Washington was this? <clears throat> this was. We worked. All over Washington. Oh, okay. Too. Uh, but I did one section that we worked in at the time was Southwest Washington. But that, oh, that, that before was the, the Renew yes, before the that's right, before, before uh, urban renewal. Yeah, before renewal. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've heard about because that. Because there was there was a health center in Southwest. That's right. Washington. Yeah, I heard that. That's right. And then tuberculosis association. We worked very closely with that health center. Right. And provided services. Right. And the other part of the job was we worked very closely with ministers of black churches. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, the ministers would meet every Monday uh, after, you know, the, the Sunday and mm -hmm. uh, I went to all of those meetings mm -hmm. you know, the, because that was my way of staying in contact with, with those people because they were instrumental in helping us to reach blacks and mm -hmm. be helpful to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paid off. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. We that 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 whole effort was a part of, you know, this whole sort of new mm -hmm. Negro health movement of getting mm -hmm. the churches involved and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's still a big yes. uh, yeah. part of it. Although I have to admit in the 1960s, we thought we had innovated that. <laughs> <laughs> we were a little full of ourselves, uh, you know, uh, back then. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I, 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 I stayed in Washington about two or three years mm -hmm. back then. Uh, I'm reflecting back on the, when, I was, when I was a graduate student at Central. Mm -hmm. uh, Several of us would talk about the future mm -hmm. of public health, what we want to do in public health education. Uh, and and uh, we were trying to identify how we thought we could fit into the field, mm -hmm. what kind of money we could make. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and see, that was during the time when here was a goal. Mm -hmm. interesting. We said at that time, we can find a job. And make five thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. We'll have it made. Yeah, right. You know, you're right. So I found my first five thousand dollar <laughs> yeah. a year job. You know, <laughs> and, and I, I didn't find it in Washington. You're right. I had to leave Washington to go to Pennsylvania, yeah. where I went to the state health department. Right, right. And worked there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, have to, well, our goals were different because when I first started out, my goal was to make $5,000 a year. <laughs> well, it wasn't a goal. It was what I made my first coming out was $5,000 a year and uh, probably uh, saved 2000 in there because that didn't have any for you. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, yeah, but you know what's interesting is I think that each generation because my opp opportunities for me were quite mm -hmm. different than you. Um, you know, they recruited me right out of undergrad and mm -hmm. sent me to grad school mm -hmm. and paid for everything mm -hmm. and so on. Um, and I didn't appreciate what your generation had done before me. And I get the same sense that the present generation is not appreciating, uh -huh. you know, those of us who went through the 60s either, you mm -hmm. know. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's amazing how this pattern yes. sort yes. of works itself yes. out. I don't think I understood um, uh, 
you know, how difficult it was uh, before the 1960s. Yes, yes. Yeah, right, yeah. So, so you went to Pennsylvania. I went to Pennsylvania and uh, I, I started there as a, a health education staff person mm -hmm. in the Pennsylvania State Health Department's Division of Chronic Diseases. Okay. And we were working cancer programs and other programs uh, with respect to, to health education in, in the state. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, it was while I was there that I took a two-year leave of absence mm -hmm. to study towards the doctor. Mm -hmm. That's when I came back to North Carolina mm -hmm. and, and did my doctoral studies mm -hmm. here at UNC in Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by that time, things had changed enough for you to actually be in the school itself. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Just that's in that right. short period. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So we, we were, we, I, I just found out after I moved back to North Carolina that uh, there's such thing as black pioneers from UNC. Yeah. Who were, and I found out, well, mm, I, I was in that group. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And this was in, yeah, as I say, in the 60s. Yeah. So exactly what year was that when you went? This mm -hmm. was, uh, we started in 61, 62, and no, 61, 62, 62, 63, uh -huh, okay. got, got the degree in 64. Mm -hmm, okay. And uh, Bill Derrick and I were students at that same Oh, okay, time. okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I've known Bill for a long time because mm -hmm. Bill went in the public health service, I think, originally, yeah, yeah. and that's how I knew him. And also because um, the first time I ever went to American Public Health Association, I walked into the big auditorium, mm -hmm. and as soon as I sat down and got comfortable, all the black people got up and walked out. And I was trying to figure out what kind of organization is this? <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. So, were you uh, participating in APHA or other organizations, yes. that yeah. local or yes. national? And, and uh, in fact, I had very good experiences in APHA. Mm -hmm. um, I, I chaired the health education section. Oh, okay. One year, and I was on the government council. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. That's some good experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did I. Yeah, yeah. It's a good organization. Yeah. So um, after you get your doctorate, you had an opportunity to think about North Carolina again, or what were you thinking after you finished your doctorate? Well, well when, I, when I finished the doctorate, uh, I went back to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. State Health Department, right. and uh, moved up administratively to chief, uh, director or chief of a section mm -hmm. within the division of public health education. Mm -hmm. Then my last responsibility at the Pennsylvania State Health Department was as the director of the division of public health education. Oh, okay. So I headed. The Pennsylvania State Department's Health Department's Division of Public Health Education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brief period. Then, in the, then I decided to go into the academic arena. Mm -hmm. After that, so I, I see. I, I left Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and then went out to the School of Public Health at the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. where I was mm -hmm. in the health education. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the more well-known, when they were only 18, that was one of the more well-known ones. It's less well-known today. I don't know exactly how that happened. I know this was back in the day of uh, Dr. Gaylord Anderson. Yeah, right. Yeah, and they had this summer program in epidemiology that, yeah, yeah, that we were encouraged to attend. So, and I stayed in the, in the academic area, so it, from Minnesota, I, I 
decided to go to Pennsylvania. Mm. Pennsylvania State, State University. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I went back to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So you got to know North Carolina I, now. Yeah, right? I, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what you done said, no matter how, you see where I wound up. I yeah, right, back that's back. true, that's true. But, but I had good experiences at, at Penn State. Yeah. I, I was there as an associate dean in a mm. new college that they had put together called the College of Human Development. Mm. It was a fascinating college. And my responsibility was in the <clears throat> area of continuing education mm -hmm. as an associate dean and working uh, towards uh, the human service field. And it was a fascinating concept mm -hmm. that they had put together there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I decided, well, maybe I got another <clears throat> another move that I can make. And so I, I had the opportunity to become vice president for academic affairs at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Okay. And uh, I, I decided to take that opportunity. It gave me an opportunity to work in a historically black university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, turned out to be a good experience for me. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. I, that was my last full time employment. I, I retired from, from that job. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I was there about 10 years, mm -hmm. so I, I retired, and I said, well, my wife and I said, we've moved enough, so let's make one more move, mm -hmm. we moved back to that thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, your, your wife from high school, did she also attend college? And she <coughs> was a graduate of North Carolina Central University. Uh -huh. uh, her field was English and library science. Oh, okay. And she was a full-time librarian. She started out at the high school in High Point, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, we married when she was there, mm -hmm. and then she moved to, came back to Raleigh. And she worked in the school system in Raleigh as a librarian, and then, uh, you know, I moved. Yeah, she moved, right. moved with, again. Yeah, right. Yeah. And right. in fact, when we were in Washington, she even worked at the Library of Congress. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. uh, and then when it wound up, she, she didn't work when I was in Minnesota. Uh. And, I, and I guess I upset the apple cart by leaving Minnesota and going to Pennsylvania State University. But her last job was uh, as a librarian. Penn State. Mm -hmm. She became director of the undergraduate library. Oh, okay. State okay. So y'all were this dynamic couple then. Well, you, you, the well, I'll let you use that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, she was an outstanding lady. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In her own field. Right. Right. So right. We were privileged to have uh, three kids, two young guys. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now I even have three grands. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So coming back to North Carolina, mm -hmm. did you were you just retiring and you were going, or were, did you have something in mind? When well, I've been retiring. Yeah, really? I, I, I when I, I retired when I retired from the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, uh -huh. I said, well, this is it. Mm -hmm. we'll go back to. On base, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. That's a good life. Yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. these things work out. It, 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 you, all you got to do is just keep working. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and, 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 and and I do believe you have to keep the faith. Yeah, in, in right. Even what you're doing. Right. And, yeah. And as my mother told me. Know that there is a God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trust Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, after all that experience, you, 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 you no longer did work in public health when you got back to Raleigh, or you, <coughs> you, you didn't have a goal of changing the state of North Carolina. Apparently, no, 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 I did not. <laughs> 
but there were so many, the needs were still there. Yeah. And you had all this experience and talent, education. Well, I, I have tried to do the best that I can in, in my own area. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, try to be helpful in this right. community setting. But um, in terms of working at it, uh, I have not done that at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I said, well, not that, not that it's the life that you just say all of a sudden do nothing. Right. I became very active in the community. Okay, that's what I want to hear about. Church. Okay, 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 all right. So what church is that? I, I'm a Baptist, First Baptist Church. I in see. But there is a first, there's a First Baptist Church in Raleigh that's, that's right. black? That's right. You're kidding. And there's a First Baptist Church in Raleigh that's not. Oh, really? <laughs> of course. <laughs> and both of them are located in downtown Raleigh. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. It's a fascinating history. Yeah. It's a fascinating history of how, at one time, the church that I'm in, First Baptist Church, was, had both white and black members. Mm. But the blacks, because of the treatment given, decided that they did not want that. Mm -hmm. So there was a separation. Mm -hmm. And the whites formed their first mm -hmm. Baptist and the blacks formed their first Baptist. Mm -hmm. And both have been thriving ever since. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I have, I think I've only been to Raleigh about four times yeah. since I've been back here. You know, yeah. so. Uh, have you been there lately? Um, it's been months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you know there's a lot of change. Lot of change. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. I, I, when I was a student here, we used to go, uh, because you used to have black exploitation movies uh -huh. back when I was a student yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And the people in Durham were stayed, you know, <laughs> they would talk back to the movie screen. You know? yeah. The people in Raleigh would start <laughs> talking back to the movie screen and having a good time. Yeah. So we would drive from Chapel Hill to go to the movies in Raleigh just because it was a lot more fun than, you know, than watching the movies in Durham. Yeah, right. But uh, so we used to go regularly back then, but I haven't uh, really been going back since I've been here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so but you've had this life experience, and you've seen a lot, experienced a lot. What would you What would you tell young people today about you know what to expect, or you know, mm -hmm. striving, or whatever? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, why don't you shut one and turn that off. Oh, I, I thought you had it. I don't know. I know. I brought it over there. Oh, uh, it's okay. But, but I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> Just mash the button on the side. Okay. Do you probably know more about it than I do? Uh, it's a nice, it's a nice uh, idea. <laughs> <laughs> what was that question again? Uh? So, you know, you've had this experience in life. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, and you know, what what would you what would you tell young people today in health education or in the field of public health mm -hmm. in terms of what to consider, what to you know how you know how they should identify a goal, proceed to a goal, what mm -hmm. you know live life. You've had a much more balanced life than I have than I had, and I think that. Having a balanced life is also one of the more important things in life. So, I think one of the things that that uh, is of interest to me is to make certain that our students take advantage of the many things that are available to them. Uh, and, and I think we have a lot of work to do. Still have a lot. To make certain that more and more of our students decide that they're going to go through the pain and agony or whatever it needs to, mm -hmm. need to go through to complete your education, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to to pursue goals that are 
far reaching um, so that you can begin to make a difference mm -hmm. not only in your life mm -hmm. but in the life of your community. Uh, and, and whenever I have the opportunity now to do my preaching with young people, mm -hmm. that's that's what I stress that the the opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. Just cannot waste it. There are just so many of our young people who are just wasting time mm -hmm. doing the other things in life that are not getting them to the next level mm -hmm. in terms of their mm -hmm. own advancement, their own achievements. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. critical. And it's something that we really need as a community. We really need that, that's not to say that we don't have a number of them who are doing well. Yeah, we, right. we do. We, we do. But, yeah. but, but, right. There are just too many who right. are not. They're, 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 they're escaping us. They're, they're, we just can't seem to get them right. to the yeah. point where they want to just buckle down and do what's necessary and important mm -hmm. to further their lives from mm -hmm. educational perspective, mm -hmm. social Right. Religious perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So, did you, uh, uh, Hildreth Poindexter, are you familiar with him? He lived in Eastern Shore. Um, mm -hmm. He was a, probably like the godfather of black public health, and some people perceive he was a physician at Howard. Uh, yeah, I think he, he worked in TB in Washington around Is the same time. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, he most of his work was international mm -hmm. in Africa, but he also was in the department, lived in Eastern Shore, mm -hmm. uh, and then came back to Howard. Um, he was, I think, 86 when I was a student at Georgetown and, um, and used to talk. Uh, to students from Georgetown and GW, black students from Georgetown and GW about public health and so on. Um, and that was a big influence on me. Um, you are about in the same position that Theo just Poindexter was when I was a student. You know, a sage in the field of public health. Um, as, as a gentleman of the old school and uh, with your experience in public health, um, do you uh, have the opportunity to mentor, meet with young people in health education, to talk about the field and uh, today? Or is that an opportunity that young people seem to be missing from my perspective? And I was just... Well, I have, I have not had that opportunity. Mm. And uh, I'm not to say that I would not appreciate This is good because I'm leading to this. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I would I would look forward to to being able yeah. to do that. Right. And, and of course it's all a part of what we talked about earlier, our need to get more and more young people involved. That's right, absolutely. 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 Well you will have that experience today. And uh, in class, looking forward to it. Right, and uh, but I think it would be great if there were more opportunities. You know, um, maybe bring some students to Raleigh uh, this summer. That uh, that we might have a conversation. I can deal with that. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Oh, good Thank you. <laughs>